Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Everything Horror Podcast, and I am your hostess tonight, uh, Paul Oki. And with me, we got a guy who is a well, I would just say um, a start off, starting off with the indie filmmaking of creating his own film, which is known as Night. I believe it came out either last year or this year. Uh, he could definitely uh, help me out on that after, too. And this is none other than the writer, director, and actor, Nicholas Jacobs. Hi, Nicholas. Or Nick. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's good. It's good. So, yeah, so please um, help me clarify. Did it night come out last year or this year? It came out this year. It came out March 17th uh, of this year uh, on povhorror.com, and it came out Amazon Prime Video on March 23rd. That's uh, incredible, I will have to say. And especially... With the whole thing going on with uh, Amazon, but we'll we'll probably get into that later on down the road. But uh, yeah. for for people listening, like myself, and well, not really listening because I'm asking you questions right now and talking to you. But for those listening right now, um, could you give us a little story or origin story of how you got into horror and what made you get inspired to create Night? Gotcha. Um, I've always been into horror, honestly. I, I remember when I was a kid, like probably around like four or five years old, I remember watching, like catching my dad watching uh, Bride of Chucky. And that was the first time I ever seen uh, a horror film. So I owe everything to Bride of Chucky, honestly. And then that started everything from there on out. I used to, I had to have all the, dolls all i see had to see all the movies and everything like and then from bride of chucky it led me to halloween nightmare on elm street and the list goes on that's it and uh yeah <laughs> so wh- how night came about was uh i was watching halloween 2018 in theaters and i loved that movie and what I loved about it was the tension that the, that they were able to create and also where it led, which was the ending, which is what I thought was probably one of the most satisfying endings to a film ever. So I wanted to create something that would sort of have the tension like uh, that film and also have an ending that would be just as satisfying. And that's, Kind of how I came up with night. That's crazy. I mean, I guess I wasn't really too much of a great big fan of the new Halloween, unfortunately, just because it reminded me way too much of like, um, what is that, Halloween uh, H2O or something, because it almost seemed it was that, but it was it, the way the joke that I like to say is that it shouldn't have been called Halloween. It should have just been called H four O because that's what it mm-hmm. reminded me of. But that's a very interesting way of uh, inspiring you to create this, especially when we got kind of two different things going on here. Like it's like yeah. I mean, yes, yours is kind of like. I guess I would just category uh, categorize it as a slasher as well, but you know, like yours is more of a uh, dark web type of feel, which is very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, but the only catch that I find is that it's like you know, with dark web, you gotta go to the secret secret link, and you don't really know if you should be watching this because you might be the next one to uh, be kidnapped to be on the dark web but with yours you know we got you playing the killer and um it's just interesting how now it's more like the dark web but it's more like live streaming whatever platform he was live streaming on as well i mean for all we know it could have been like facebook or twitch or something Mm mm-hmm 
Yeah, the story uh, definitely didn't stem too much from Halloween, but but the, but the uh, like before I even started writing the, this script, I knew where I wanted it to go, uh, as in the ending. The ending was planned before I even wrote anything down. I was like, okay, I want to make a movie about this guy. He's after this girl, but. The movie can't, it's not satisfying if this guy wins at the end. So, so something has to happen in order for this girl to get back at this guy who's been torturing her. And where the idea of the live stream and everything came from was, uh, it pretty much reality. Um, it's not, it's not too much based off of, uh, a film. Well, it's based a little bit off of that movie Cam. Like, but I, I wrote it before I seen the movie Cam. But I was like, okay, so uh, the Netflix film. So I was like, okay, so Cam, uh, Cam's cool, you know. They 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 they, they, they tapped into the live stream stuff, and they had her responding to these people who are are like, well, she's doing the stuff on her own. I, I don't really think that the, any of them wanted her to do this the crazy shit that she does but so th that that kind of helped and also hostile uh, a little bit of hostile too um like the fact that people are torturing people for money but it but it's just a little bit more modern uh, kind of like a modern hostile story i guess you could use to say hmm that's a lot of inspiration from different like i said different type of films and hostile mm. is a very interesting film as well mm -hmm. and speaking of the fact that you said that it kind of was inspired by reality i did find that uh interesting because i thought the same thing especially mm -hmm. with the thing that had been going on with real life where we will probably heard it where some guy was live streaming on facebook and the next thing you know he ended up gunning down like a couple people and you know it took it took facebook i forget how long 15 minutes or so before they actually shut down the live stream now uh the reason why i'm bringing this up too is w w the way i looked at your film night it w it almost acted like you were creating this in a way to have, i'm trying to figure out how to word this like like night is almost like a wake up call as into reality like hey you know wake up like this is what's going on with the live streaming nowadays exactly uh and like i said like those movies uh there are some there are similarities and i obviously pulled from them a little bit but at the end of the day this movie is pretty much like the story of the film is definitely more inspired by reality than anything else and uh i definitely wanted to show that and that's why i had the girl on our phone and glued to our phone throughout the whole opening of the film because like I I'm guilty of that myself. And I actually ran into some crazy situations, uh, at, like a few years ago at, at, by just being on my phone and not being aware of my surroundings. A and that stuff happens all the time. And I think that society needs to realize that it's not like technology can, uh, like it's a great thing, but also it can really hurt us if it's used wrong. Oh yeah, it can be our worst night, uh, our worst nightmare or enemy, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I appreciated that, like like I said, that like wake up call, like oh wow, like you know, like like this guy was stalking her for a good five or ten minutes before the kidnapping occurred, and I believe too she was like uh, not only on her phone, but I believe she was like either listening to music or something because I yep. she had like headphones in as well. Yeah, she did. Yeah. So like, once again, that, you know, when you're listening to music or whatever uh, that you're doing, whether it even being talking to somebody, but with those headphones in you, you will block out the noises around you, especially when it's late at night, you're in a skeptical area that are known for high crime volumes at night or whatever. And you know, that, I think that go, uh, that really showed like, you know, somebody could really be stalking you for a good 10 minutes 
and you won't even realize it because you're too busy on your phone and once it's over you're already kidnapped or if you are happen to be smart enough to look over your shoulders every two seconds to be like okay i need i i know i'm listening to something on my headphone but i need to like you know be aware of my surroundings as well but in this case she did not like look behind her shoulder she just kept walking and it's it's scary because you know it it could happen in real life where somebody can literally walk down the road and not be seen again because they just like you said was paying attention to the phone or whatever exactly and also i feel like a lot of people nowadays have this uh I mean, it, not always, not only just nowadays, I feel like a lot of people have always been doing this is like, they would see these crazy things happening on the news or wherever. And they'd be like, oh yeah, uh, but that's not going to happen to me. They, they all have that idea, you know? And the, the, the fact is, uh, the person usually that it happens to probably said that at one, at one point in time. So it, that's not true, you know? Uh, and, and people need to realize that. Exactly. Exactly. Now, can you give us a little bit of more of what really in, like inspired you to really want to like, like write and act and to, I know you kind of said direct the film a little bit, but what really like, like what really inspired you besides these movies? Like what made you just want to go, man, I need to create my own film. Well, that's been kind of like a, a burden on me for a few years now because uh i i i'm not going to college i just graduated high school and the reason why i didn't go to college is because every uh like film director and uh like person in the industry that i've talked to has always told me that that's not something that you really need and we're not the richest people in the world so i didn't want to uh i didn't want to do that if i didn't have to you know because th this is what i want to do with my life and i knew that so i think it was like a few months at after i graduated from high school i met bruce campbell which is a, a, a huge he's probably m the number one inspiration uh for for me in the film industry and i asked him i was like hey man like uh what do you think about college like what a any advice for college and Th these are his words, not mine. He, he told me straight off, fuck college. And I was like, huh. And, 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 and those words really stuck with me because, and then I thought about Bruce's story and how, like, what they did when they were uh, around my age, which, which is what, what, what they did was him and Sam and Rob Tapper and all, all the guys, they, they went to high school and then they try, some of them tried out for college. I mean, but they eventually dropped out. And they were like, let's just make our own thing. So that was kind of, this is kind of my evil bed uh, in a way. And that's, that's really what inspired me to make this movie. It, it, like, if they can do it, then so can I, you know? So that's yeah. where, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's where that came from. And I'm sorry, what was the, the other question that you asked me? Um, just, just mainly what made you want to act in your own film? Oh, well, I'm not actually, uh, an actor. So like, like, like this movie was just me. Um, I mean, I, I've done a few things in the past, but I, I'm mainly, uh, a, an editor, writer and director. That's where like, uh, where I focused on the most, uh, over the years, but me acting was kind of because I had nobody else to and, and that's, that's the same thing uh for my sister uh I had her act in in the past uh like from for a, a film a shoot a, a, a few short films that I did but other than that like this is the biggest thing that we ever did like uh lengthwise you know so me acting basically came from I kind of had to for this movie because I didn't have anybody and I also didn't have a budget either. Uh, we're not really actors. We're not really trained actors or whatever. So this is kind right. of us just working what we, with what we had, you know? 
Right. I mean, you're that's why you're an independent person. You know, you're you made this with your own blood, sweat, and tears, and it was your vision, and you could only do so much because, like you just said, you literally had no budget. So, Mm. so that, um, so how I guess. So in high school at all, did you ever, or did you teach it yourself? Um, did, so did you take any classes for like editing to help create your film or did you like look up how to, or what did you do to edit? Like, how did you learn to edit your own film? Well, I took a film class in high school and that's where they, uh, they taught me all the basics and, and a little bit more. Uh, in regards to the technical side, not so much uh, like the acting or anything, which we acted in our own film then too, but that was because uh, high school was a little bit more fun. You know, it was just kind of like uh, a little bit less serious. Like I-, I feel like none of the high school, the high school films that I've made have been 100% genuinely serious, maybe a few, but they were kind of just like, let's mess around and see what we can do type of things. And that's where I learned everything now. And and I, I never stopped learning, but th- if it wasn't for high school, then I wouldn't know the basics, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's funny because, um, you know, back when I used to go to high school, I actually took a digital arts class. I could have taken a film class and, but I almost wanted to do that for my second year actually. Cause I wanted to mm-hmm. learn both digital arts and the film, but I never, um, could get, uh, into the film class that I, that I was hoping for, for my second year because of the whole high school credit bullshit thing that you need mm-hmm. for requirements, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was really cool though anyway, because I had, I made friends that was from that class. And me and him would, like, go back and forth because, like, you know, since I was learning digital art, he needed, like, a specific, like, image made. So, you know, I was learning the basics for that, too. So I was helping him out as much as I could. And if I couldn't do it, then I would have somebody else do it in my class. So it it worked Mm -hmm. out in a way. But, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, so... so did, did you have a, a dream of becoming a filmmaker too? Is that something that, that you you wanted to do, or what's your story? I, I'm curious now. <laughs> um, I never actually thought I could ever direct nor write something, but recently, um, I actually started to write my own little short horror script, which is based mm. off a local legend here in my area for like a ghost story, and mm. so. If anything, uh, from people, from me talking with people like you and other other great people that I've met on the show, um, that I guess expired me or inspired me, not expired. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> uh, so, I think really my inspiration came to try my own is from people like you guys who didn't give up on yourself, wanted to try it out, and boom, you made it and happen the only downside though is you know when you finally make your movie right and you're not really well known especially with Mm. you this is your first film actually made is the Mm. outcome because once you put it out there that's it you know like that's where all the internet trolls everybody comes out to either destroy you or Mm -hmm. or give you like hey you know for a first film and somebody that's actually, you know, did something right or did this or thought this was cool, you know, I would think that would be great. But so with Night, uh, real quick too, would you, uh, would you, Nicholas, is uh, when you first wanted to bring out Night to the public, what would your feeling on finally being able to put it out into the public? It was such a relief because this has been the hardest thing that I've ever done because I've known how to make a movie, whether that be short or long, for a, a, a while now, a few years. But there was a there, there's a whole business side that I that I still don't know like much about at all. 
that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. The business side to film is, it, it's not, it's not the funnest, you know, like, it's like something like that is the most stressful to me. Like actually making the movie, writing the script, that's a little bit less stressful than doing the paperwork and copyright, you know, all that. So <laughs> that was, uh, so I, I was just so relieved to be able to, you know, as soon as I was like, oh my God, finally, I'm done with this. You know, just get it out there. So th that's, that's how it was for me. <laughs> now, when you were filming it, it, were there any type of challenges of filming this movie? Yeah, th there was, because we only had seven days to, uh, to complete it. So, and also, we only had, like, a few hours each day, too, because my sister, uh, she, she does other stuff. Like, she's a, um, she's a dancer, and she does gymnastics and, and all. So I, I only had her for a few hours each day because she, she had all these other stuff, all these other things that she had to get to. So we had to get as much done to the best of our ability in a few hours for seven days. So that every day was a struggle in, in, in that regard. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty impressive though. I mean, you know, for 10 days and you only were able to do a couple hours just to make this, uh, I believe it was like 65 minute film. It, mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive for 10 days and for only having you and your sister in it, I think made it a little bit more or less stressful too, because maybe yeah. you had more people that actually appeared in the film besides um, the, I want to say lady that was like knocking on the door and stuff and was mm -hmm. like, Hey, what are you doing? And stuff like that. Like, I think if she would more as well into the film, I think, time would have been more precious too because you know you yeah. want to make sure everything is like spot on and i know how most people where if they have somebody for a day they will shoot all their scenes in a day or a weekend just to get it all done and then mm -hmm. go back and edit it in so it's it's really interesting to hear all these weird type of hacks of what you can do but yeah it's it's nice um Definitely. now after you have released it nicholas is there anything now after you've seen it or even from what you heard that if you mm. could go back to your film to edit anything is there anything that you would fix and if so what would it be and why well a lot of people seem to um not like the fact that I left in the sound of the retractable knife. Uh, and I obviously did that on purpose. I could have uh, put it in a sound effect, but I chose not to. And the reason why is because, like, it, this co goes back to what inspired me to make this movie. And that's because I, this, I was trying to make this movie my evil dead. And if you remember, uh evil dead the original you like you see certain things that like in the movie because of the budget and and you could look at it and you know how they did these effects like say uh i think it was shelly ash shoots shelly uh through the the the, the hole in the door and she sh he shoots her in the face and then you see the blood hose like squirting for, uh out of her face and you could see the hose and you could tell how they did it and I honestly love that stuff. Like, th th like that type of th that, that that type of thing makes me like that inspires me. Like, you don't have to watch behind the scenes, and you're looking at this movie, and you're like, wow. Like, I could see how they do that. Like, th this is just a group of friends, and they made this movie together, and, and they used a blood hose. Like, you don't even need to watch behind the scenes to see how they did it. You can watch it in the movie. And like, and also like you see like, uh, like in, in other movies, like you see like a puppeteer's uh, hand moving this thing, you know, or the rod to something like, I, I don't know. I just love that stuff. And like, I think that this story was, uh, really sick and twisted, but I, obviously like this movie is really tainted to compared to something like hostile or whatever, because 
I don't like really, really gory and overly graphic, like torture porn type of stuff. So like, even though this story would have been, if it was given to anybody else, I tamed it down because one, we didn't have the budget. And also, even if we did, I wouldn't have done the crazy stuff because that's just not my type of thing. Like I, I, the, the story is definitely twisted, but I didn't want to go with the over the top torture stuff. And, and I wanted to be a little bit, I wanted to have these moments that pull the audience out, if you know what I'm trying to say. Like, because at the end of the day, this is a movie. You're not literally watching this girl get tortured. And I think if anybody really will watch a, watch a movie where a girl gets tortured and like it, then some, something's wrong, you know? But especially if it looks real. That, that, that's why I wanted it to look fake, uh, at least in certain circumstances, because I, I wanted that feeling. Well, but I, no, I, I wouldn't change it. Good, good. That's just the way it should be anyways. I mean, you know, yeah. like, you, if you have your mindset on the way you want it, then that's the way it should be. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we get told by internet trolls all the time, well, some people do, that, well, maybe if you did this or maybe if you added this, and it's just like, you know, it's, it's like those people that go to the theater just to get jump scared if you get what i'm saying like you know they don't care about the story they don't care about what's really going on they're just going there just to get scared and it's just like what is going on here like yeah which i i have no jump scares at night by the way if you notice that no, I, I didn't want any of that i i want it to be semi like realistic uh and that's why i didn't add any music in there either and there's a lot of like uh takes where it's just like long, long takes because I wanted it to feel somewhat like this guy is literally recording this girl and this is not a movie. But then I also added those little things in there that where you're like, okay, so this is a movie, you know? Right. Right. And it's nice too. The, the only thing that I found really interesting um, and I don't know it's just because you didn't have the the right light in, but I noticed like when the killer was trying to do the live stream, there wasn't really like a light coming from like a screen or something to really show like mm -hmm. on something. So what was the mm -hmm. idea behind that? Why wasn't there like a like a lit screen or was it supposed to be there, but it was more like a um you know, like a dim light, I guess can I say? Mm -hmm. Well, I chose not to do that because I, I kind of wanted the uh, the character to be like a silhouette. Like you don't really know. Like mm -hmm. you know, like maybe he has a mask on, but like you see it sometimes, but you don't others. So you're like, I don't know anything about this guy. I don't know what he looks like. And that's why I didn't want to show him at all. I want him to be basically a silhouette. I like that. I didn't even think of that. So, so I'll give you props for that. So, um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of experimental stuff in here. Like, a lot of people were saying uh, also, like, when the chat starts up, they, they would have maybe liked to see something, like, straight out of uh, uh, Unfriended, where, like, you see the chat come up. And the reason why I chose not to do that is because it's been done. Uh, this I, I wanted to do something different here. And that's why I chose a lot of experimental uh, ways of doing things, because I wanted to try something new. And a lot of people were complaining about the black screen when uh, uh, when the girl uh, gets Knocked out in the beginning. Over. Yeah, the black screen. And then you hear the footsteps and you, you don't see where she's going. But then she pulls the hand away and then you see something. And then her hand goes in front. And you're like, what's going on here? And I wanted to do that in a really experimental way. And that's why I think that this movie is definitely not for everybody because it's so... Uh, different i feel like i feel like a lot of people aren't uh they don't know what they're watching they don't really know what they're getting into with this one you know and i feel like that's probably why but hey i mean it is what it is you know and yeah exactly it is what it is and for people that complain about the black screen have you ever stopped to think that hey maybe that's what's making you want to continue to watch to see what happens next mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly I mean, uh, I mean, I know I used to be picky a, a little bit of stuff like that, but then when I really started to realize it, like as I grew older too, it's like, oh, I get it. This is really making me amp up to see what the hell is going on and what's coming mm -hmm. next. 
because, like, as you're saying, like, you know, we heard the, the girl's footstep and stuff like that. It's just, like, it's one of those things, like, like, what is she doing? Like, you know, like, exactly. Uh, and then when, um, you know, and then when the camera gets fixed and stuff, then you see what she's up to, if I may say. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to try to give too much away here, too. But, yeah, I know. But, um, but yeah, I, I see your point, too, there. And as for unfriended and stuff, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess we're not looking at a screen all night long. Oh, wait a minute. Am I? Th yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of the right movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's not like we're looking at a screen all throughout the entire film. We're actually seeing what looked to be like a real live stream. Not mm -hmm. something where, you know, where found footage is, if we, well, yeah, this is mainly found footage, but, um, you know, it's not like the typical found footage where, you know, we see the record icon and everything else and the battery yeah. life. In this mm -hmm. case, it, it's what we would actually see in a real live stream. It's really nothing mm -hmm. except for the natural lighting and wherever the camera is with and seeing too. Exactly. And that's another thing that people were talking about. They're like, oh, uh, it's pretty much just one shot. Uh, just one shot of this guy and that's it as soon as he gets her in the chair and I was thinking I was like uh, well I mean yeah because that's kind of what it is like when you're watching a live stream do do they get up and move their camera around and you know and, and also that's another uh, thing about this movie is I'm not the, the the biggest fan of found footage movies and the reason for it is like I don't like the, the shaky camera stuff, especially like where like we, you don't know, you're like, you're like, oh, this is, this is hard to watch, you know, you can't focus on anything. So I was, this is my way, like I was, if I was like, okay, if I'm going to make a sound footage movie, I'm going to sit the camera down and everything's, you're going to be able to see everything, you know, you're not going to hide anything here. Hmm. I like that. I like that. And that's interesting. I don't mind some found footage as long as it's done right. But otherwise, yeah, of course, it, of course. Yeah, but if I, it is, yeah, always I don't shaking, hate it. Yeah, exactly. But if it's always shaken, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to really think about that, except for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to be watching? Like, somebody's shaking. Like, I understand if the person's scared or something and they're shaking because they're trying yeah. to show fear or something. But if it's supposed to be like, a normal scene and it's all over the place, then yeah, I mean, I don't, I might need to yeah. go back to redo that, I think. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I love the way Paranormal Activity did it, like, uh, through the security cameras. I mean, that was a pretty much static shot, too, and that was pretty cool because they didn't, they weren't really hiding anything from you in that room, at least. I like the, uh, which one was it? Number three. Where they put the camera on the fan, the rotating mm. fan. I really like that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. And there was another one. Maybe, maybe it was the security cameras, but I know the rotating fan one was really, really nice. And, and I wasn't too pleased with the last one. That's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Man, I, I really think that was it. I think that was like the only type of camera shot I really enjoyed with that rotating fan. Huh. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Whoops. Well, oh well. Um Yeah, I mean at least at least with night though, like it's a nice experimental thing. It's not like you said, it's not gonna please everybody. And for those that completely understand the idea, I think are really gonna enjoy it. And mm -hmm. With that being said, what what are your plans with your film night going forward? So, like, um, are you planning on releasing some sort of physical thing, or are you keeping it digital? Is there, are we going to see some sort of, like, sequel or prequel where we see maybe, well, maybe not prequel, but some sort of sequel where somebody else gets kidnapped in a different way. Um, yeah. So what are your future plans with night? 
Well, if I ever get to make it, I do actually have an idea for a prequel, actually. And it would kind of uh, tap into the phone call, uh, the character on the phone, which mm. I think is a really, really interesting story that that character has. And we should really explore that because she knows what he's doing, but she doesn't call the police on him or anything. So, and, and the reason why, uh, if I ever get to make it, uh, you, like in the prequel, you'll see why she can't call the police on him. That's all I'll say with that. Ooh, this already sounds good, and I can't wait to hopefully hear that you are making the uh, prequel. <laughs> it just already <laughs> sounds very interesting. Now, At the end. yeah, and you know, it's one of those things where a lot of people sometimes, I know, I know I say it, like, does this film really need a prequel? Mm, no. But no, not exactly now. Yeah, but then there's somewhere, like, in this case, I like your idea. Okay, we're going to see what's going on with the person before this movie of what really mm -hmm. happened that you're saying. So I think that works in, out really well, and it's just you know, like I said before, it's just as long as it's done right, you can pretty much get away with doing it anyway, or like any way possible too, as mm -hmm. long as it's done right. But yeah, and and, and I mean, if, if I never ever get to make it, this film stands on its own. It, it, you don't actually need anything else. I feel like, but no, you don't. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say too. Is like yeah. you know, even if we don't see anything else, we at we still have that mystery of, wait a minute, why is she not calling the cop? So, mm -hmm. you know... And you can come up with your own your own scenario of why. Exactly. As of right now, yeah. Exactly. We can... It allows us to use our own imagination to create our own story of why she cannot call the cops. Yeah, and, and, I, and I love that. I love the mystery. Like, that's another thing about, exactly. like, the Halloween that I love. Like, who is Michael Myers? Uh, nobody really knows. I mean, eventually the sequels, you find out exactly who he is. But in the first movie, you're like, what the hell is this guy? Like, what's going on? You know? And I love that. I love the mystery. On which you watch Rob Zombie films. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the first one I, I like, I, I, I like the, um, like, I really like the, the kid stuff with, uh, with Loomis. I thought we'd never seen that before. And I thought that was really cool. Because it's never been done. We never got to see a young Michael. And I, I really like that about that movie. Yeah, there was some nice things. But but then it kind of ruined the imagination, the mystery behind Michael as well, in a way. Yeah. I, but so, I mean, I guess he was, he was doing his own Michael, I guess. I mean, it's a different Michael. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, I know we were just trying to touch on this subject a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. it's now as the independent filmmaker, what are your thoughts on like the recent event that went on with Amazon where they were targeting small people such as yourself and pulling films off of Amazon? And then now I don't know if you have Instagram or not, but now Instagram is targeting the hashtag, uh, horror, just the regular horror. They're now saying that hashtag horror is more of a self harm to us now, and that if we need support, we need to get it. Otherwise, pretty much, pretty much, Instagram is saying that we that it is not okay to uh, you know to to appreciate horror, even though it's something completely different, but. Yeah, but what are your thoughts on the whole Amazon and Instagram? This is honestly news to me. Re really? Like, is Amazon targeting specifically uh, horror indie films, too? Oh, yeah. There's been, there's been uh, a few films where they... Let, let me... Okay, so let me rephrase this. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of a film called Cherokee Creek? No, actually. Okay, that is a comedy horror film, right? That was mm -hmm. supposed to be released 
back in December of, two, of uh, actually right on Christmas Day. Let me just rephrase that too. So right on Christmas Day, it was supposed to come out on Amazon. Amazon did not put it out on Christmas Day, but it was up on everywhere else, which was like iTunes, Google Play, etc. of where it was uh, at the time, like Voodoo even. And um, so for a month uh, later, which now it's January 25th, Cherokee Creek got brought back on Amazon. However, the one thing that I, I noticed because I um, I first rented it on iTunes since Amazon didn't have it. And then when it was finally on Amazon, I actually bought the film to help support the indie artist. And um, the one thing that I noticed right off is if you watch Cherokee Creek on iTunes, it's mm -hmm. pretty much the movie that you want that that you should be seeing. However, on Amazon, in order for it to come out on Amazon, they actually had to take out the real beginning and the real ending, mm. which was mm. kidnappers. So, um, yeah, and then there's other other people that have uh, mentioned that their films were on Amazon, and then all of a sudden they got pulled down without any reason, and they didn't even get notified by Amazon that their film got pulled for what no reason, and it's really weird because now after like somebody like me who's actually been kind of trying to keep it alive of course and let people know that this is actually going on and is that uh films seem to be coming back up on amazon that actually have been pulled and some of the stupid things that i hear and have seen that amazon has pulled is like um they need to take out a specific scene or this word in the movie title need to be changed for VOD. But the other weird thing is that the same word that had to be changed is still the same for the DVD, but not VOD. Is so it, like, it, like, do they think that people are going to get offended by these things? That's what is it that seems. why you think? Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Like, um, I don't exactly remember the title, but it was something ass ass kicker or something like that. Something ass kicker, and mm -hmm. that movie got pulled on VOD until the ass had to get changed to butt. So now it's the something butt kicker, but um. the DVD still says ass. Mm. So how the hell does that work? And, and wait, Amazon selling the DVD? Yeah, Amazon. Um, I don't know if it's just Prime. I don't know if it's just Instant Video. But yeah, it's 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 um their VOD, whether it be in Prime or Instant Video. I'm not quite sure. I think it's really oh. both. I think. But yeah, and then now we got Instagram where if you search uh, hashtag horror, it it gives you like a warning at first. It says something about like um, what you may see could could inflict like self harm and like could even lead to death. So, and if you need help, you need to get support. And then you got two options where you can get support or you can see the post, anyways. So it's just like, what the hell is going on with Instagram? So, and now there's talk that people think that in, because of Instagram targeting just the the horror hashtag, they think they're going to go after anything that had the word horror in it now. Hmm. Yeah, pretty crazy. So, so, so this is a really recent thing, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And we have a couple people that are trying to tell Instagram, like, you know, horror is healthy, which it is. I mean, because people like me and you, right, who would use the hashtag, hashtag uh, horror, you know, it, it, it affects us. And because, you know, that's like the, the popular hashtag, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. without people using it, nobody's really going to see our post because of the fact that Instagram is trying to say horror is a self-harming way to ourselves and can possibly lead to death. So we need to get help that we're not okay, even though we're okay. Because we all know it's, it's a genre and it's a lifestyle. We, we love it because of the, you know, the whatever, the endless possibilities of trying to be scared or anything, really. It's, it, you know, horror. That's why, I've, I mean, I love horror. There's so many things that can creep us out. And there's so many ideas maybe yet to even be done or seen. Like, uh, you know, there's different type of sea monsters that we could possibly see that we still don't even in today's reality we don't even know like what exists but if they were to make a film saying like oh look this thing just got washed up ashore and what can this be and then you know the whole movie can be this random sea creature that we've never seen before and you know like that's that can be scary i mean look at what happened with the original film jaws when that came out people ended up going shark hunting because of that movie Jaws. They wanted to kill all the sharks because of Jaws. Because they think the sharks would do what Jaws did. Even though they can't. Do you think that, uh, like, I mean, like, are, are you scared for horror, like, as a genre? Is that is that what you're trying to say? Like, do you think that uh, there's going to be less and less horror? Like, because of this, especially indie horror? Well, if Amazon keeps targeting the small people for weird reasons like that without giving an explanation, I mean, mm. that can that can do a lot to somebody, especially on Amazon. You know, Amazon is a well-known yeah, platform. And mm. with the same example for you, right? Because your film is on there. And... Mm. Um, what now? What would you do if your film was pulled, but you didn't know that, and you didn't even have an explanation? You know, like now, now yeah. you're kind of fucked because you're like, oh shit! Like what? Is, like what's wrong? Like you know, you got to contact Amazon or have whoever. Um, if you went through a publisher, or unless you self did it yourself. Um, which, by the way, did you did you uh, go to a publisher or did you put it up yourself? Well, I, I put it. Up, I, I put everything up myself, pretty much. The the, the only deal that I made was uh, the uh, distributing deal was uh, to pobhar dot com. So yeah, I, I had to I had to sign sign uh, an agreement with them. But other than that, Amazon, I, I put it on my put it up myself. Okay, so yeah, so then. So that that right there can be very interesting topic right there. Where if yeah. Amazon were to pull it, then what do you do? You now you got to contact Amazon if you even get an answer to figure out what is wrong with your movie and why it got taken down. Yeah, it's definitely, it, it does seem pretty shady. Uh, I think that. I think that horror will always find a way, though. Like, I mean, I, I obviously I wouldn't be making as much. Uh, like, say if say if my movie did get pulled from Amazon, it would still be on POV horror. But obviously, pro- probably I'll be I'll be making more money on Amazon, you know, because it's a it reaches a wider audience. Exactly. But, yeah. So 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 that's the thing, but. I do think that the horror community is, uh, whether they like us or hate us or not, doesn't really matter because I think the horror community is probably the, the, the best, uh, group of fans out there, honestly, and the most loyal too, I think. No, I, so no matter what, I, yeah, I definitely think that horror is not going anywhere. 
whether we have to find out a different way of doing things, uh, that remains to be seen. But I think the horror is not going anywhere. And definitely indie horror. Because, honestly, it doesn't matter if you have a budget or not. I feel like uh, the horror community especially, like, it doesn't matter about that, you know? It, it matters about... Uh, it matters about who the person is, what the intent behind it is, and the art of it, you know? Like, and that's why uh, the community is so awesome. They're so accepting to all these things. And my film uh, is actually rated higher on POV Horror than it is on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. We got less bad ratings on there. So my film obviously is for that more of that type of uh, fan base, you know, than the wider audience. Well, see, that that's exactly like what I mean. Because when I was trying to say earlier, where you're like, yeah, I know you know, you mean. made your film, and then you got to put it out there to the public, where they're either going to tear it apart or not. And mm -hmm. see, that's the thing with Amazon. Amazon puts it. That's why everybody loves Amazon because everybody knows it. It's a big company. It's a big name. Everything yeah. is pretty much on there, almost. And like you know it it's where people feel they can be their own critic if that makes sense so yeah 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 and even though some people may not like found footage that much they're still gonna try it if that makes mm -hmm. sense as well <clears throat> kind of like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you're not really a big found footage fan but i bet you anything if you could rent a found footage film, you would at least give it a try. So I think that's yeah, exactly. the idea. And unfortunately, though, not a lot of people like found footage. So that's where the problem becomes, you know, mm -hmm. where people that don't like it and they want to see like a traditional shot film, they're not going to get that with night, unfortunately. Yeah. But with p point of view uh, or POV horror, which is point of view anyway, but. um. You know, that is literally what it is. And, yeah. and you know, everybody that likes that type of stuff, it just, that's it. Like, you know, like everybody can just go mm -hmm. to the horror and that's what you're going to get. Nothing traditional really shot. And it's, it's kind of cool to really see, I guess, a company that focuses mainly on found footage. Since a lot of people mm -hmm. really don't like found footage. So it's kind of cool to see its own home if that makes sense yeah i know what you mean and uh like well uh, i didn't know exactly uh, that uh, much about it at first but once i realized what exactly what it was i i definitely wanted to be a part of it it was it's really cool yeah exactly i mean it's the best place for found footage horror to go on i think mm -hmm. and even though it is subscription based but at least it all kinds of found footage and you know yeah. it it's a community pov is like a community that takes the found footage and makes it into a family in a way so for exactly. people that enjoy found footage it's their way of saying hey you may knock on it but at least we have a home for it mm -hmm. so my final question uh for you tonight Unless, actually, before I actually give you it, is there anything that I have not touched on that you feel should be mentioned, or do you think we did pretty okay? I think we pretty much talked about it all. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. So for your final question, then, is what are your plans for the future, and how can we possibly see another film for you? Um, uh, well, definitely I'll probably be putting my movies on, uh, if it is found footage, I'll try to get it on uh POV horror and hopefully everything, uh, hopefully the whole thing with Amazon is, is, is going well. I mean, hopefully, uh, they, they don't keep doing what they're doing apparently, but hopefully there too, you know, um, but in regards to what's my next project, it's kind of up in the air right now. I'm just like, I'm kind of brainstorming, but definitely within 
the next couple of weeks, I should be uh, at least writing uh, my next script. I think I might do something uh, a little bit more original before going to a sequel, though, or a prequel, if I ever get to. I think I might try to do something completely different from night. Hey, there's always room for experimentation to try something out, too. Mm hmm Now, I did forget this for Amazon, too, because I uh, talked with the guy that actually made the film. Another mm. weird film that was actually taken down from Amazon was a how-to-make Halloween makeup. Mm. And then about a week ago, Guess what? Amazon put it back up. I have no idea what happened, and I don't think he even does. So it just randomly showed up again. I don't know why, but it did get pulled. So I don't know. I don't know what the did, hell is going on with Amazon. They didn't change anything to it this like this time. They didn't say you have to take this out or. As far as I saw, nope, nothing would change from what I was reading from the guy. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, I don't know what Amazon looks for when they take it down and then try to re put it back up. But I can understand, I guess, some name, some words. But but the one thing that really makes it weird is like I was say, saying with the ass kicker one. So if you had to change ass to butt, how come the ass kicker? It's still the same title for the DVD, but not the VOD. What the hell is the difference? So mm -hmm. that's the only thing I can think of. But all right. Um, yeah, so Nicholas, thank you so much for uh, talking with me. Um, thank you for having me. Especially to learn, about, uh, uh, to learn more about Night as well, because after you listening to you, you kind of answered some of the questions in my head of, well, why didn't he do that? He like, it felt like a missed opportunity. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it makes sense listening to you. So that's why I didn't, like, want to completely be like, oh, well, this film is just, you know, garbage. But it's not because, you know, it, it's a cool way of looking at it. And... Yes, there is some scenes that I felt were could have been a little bit better portrayed with acting wise, but you know, mm. in the end, but then again, we're not actors, though, really. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, <laughs> we can't really say. Well, maybe they had better acting classes. No, you know, it two it's literally two people just trying to make a film, whether <laughs> how good the acting is or not. It's just one of those things where it's just like, well. At least you made the film, but for somebody that says, well, maybe the acting could be better, the best response to that is, well, you make the fucking movie, and then we'll talk about it, and then I will judge your film, <laughs> you know, like, is he going to judge mine? I'll judge yours. Let's see you make a film first, and then we'll talk. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't make a film. Oh, okay, then, Steve, I mean... <laughs> You know, like, then don't open your goddamn mouth. <laughs> oh, gotta love people. Anyway, um, before I go more off topic here, is Nicholas, is there any way on social media or anything where we can keep up with everything and anything night or you at all to know what's coming in the future? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can follow uh, Night Official Movie and everything else from there, you'll be able to find everything. Nice. Sounds like an awesome night. Ha, ha, ha. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you so much again, Nicholas. And um, if you ever make something in the future, we will definitely have to have you back on because it was nice chatting with you. And Thank you. And if you ever feel like you want to put in your thoughts on anything that we're doing in the future, I'll definitely reach out to you and you can more than welcome to come on and state your opinion, whether if you hate it or not. So we'd like to have you even on for future episodes as well. Definitely. I'll keep in touch. Yeah, definitely. And for everybody else listening, please 
make sure that you take your fucking headphones out of your ear so you can enjoy the environment. Or, and I mean, the surroundings. Like, make sure you know that there's not a juicy stalker trying to rub your leg or, you know, make funny faces behind you to kidnap you and then later torture you on a live stream. And until next time, guys, stay scared.